What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna be checking out nine superstars who never turned heel in WWE. There are some superstars, some wrestlers, that they just don't turn heel because it doesn't really work for them. Like they they will always get cheered. Um, I know John Cena started off as a heel, and then he he was pretty much a babyface and probably will forever be a babyface. Um, I believe Rey Mysterio's a person. I don't think he's ever been heel. I think in WWE, he's always been a babyface because it works. I mean, granted, because, you know, Rey is a smaller guy, but it, it it's kind of hard to buy into someone that's a smaller guy that's a heel. I mean, it could work, but Rey's just always been lovable. If people like his moveset, his moveset gives off babyface vibes. He doesn't have a heel-like moveset. And movesets are important to the overall persona of a character too as well so but we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support man road to 90k let's do the damn thing wwb superstars career they will likely undergo a number of character changes where these character changes come heel and babyface turns these turns allow the superstar in question to remain fresh and show fans another layer of their persona mm -hmm. whilst it's common for superstars to flip between heel and babyface throughout their career some wwb stars have remained a babyface throughout their extensive tenure in the company on occasion, heel turns for these particular superstars have been pitched, <laughs> but WWE higher-ups have rejected any creative plans that would see the superstar turn to the dark side and opted instead to keep them as a fan favorite. But which ones were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at 9 WWE superstars who never turned heel. Be sure to Should subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow already. us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Oh, wow, Number like 9, <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan The inaugural oh. Royal Rumble winner Hacksaw Jim Duggan has remained a beloved babyface during his two separate runs in WWE. Duggan was presented as Working Man's Patriot and for his entire WWE tenure he had fans on his side. It's unknown why the WWE never decided to turn him heel. It has been common in the past for Patriot gimmicks to flip mm -hmm. between babyface and heel. Take for instance Kurt Angle, Sergeant Slaughter and Jack Swagger. However, this never seemed a consideration for Duggan. Although Duggan never turned heel in WWE, in WCW, Vince Russo decided to experiment with Duggan's more villainous side. Following Duggan's infamous role as the WCW janitor, he would join heel stable Team Canada. This was a rather unnatural role for Duggan and fans struggled to take him seriously as yeah. anything other than a heroic babyface. Number yeah. 8, Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly was virtually the face of the WWE's women's division. She was the face of the women's division, all right. <laughs> For a lot of, a lot of you uh, men out there, especially the king, the king loved him some Kelly Kelly on commentary a little bit too much. It was like, all right, all right, king, calm down. I'll go, okay, king, okay, Jerry Lawler, please calm down, bro. Vision for the period of 2011 to 2012. Whilst Kelly wasn't the best in-ring worker in the world, she tried her best to get better, and she had an organic connection with the audience. Kelly was in WWE for a total of six years, and during that time, she never turned heel. This means that Kelly is the only woman in WWE history to never turn heel. Wow. According to Kelly, during an interview with the Asylum Wrestling Store, at one stage of her career, she went directly to Vince McMahon and suggested a heel turn, but it was ultimately rejected. She stated, I didn't want to be a heel. I really did. And I remember I went to Vince McMahon's office one day because I was like, let me ask him what he thinks about me being a bad guy. And he was like, First off, let me see your bad guy face. <laughs> he tried to have this mean look and after two seconds, I started laughing. Yeah. He's like, that's exactly why you could never be a bad guy. Have a good day, Kelly. You're good. That was the one and only time I ever tried and then I just left it alone. <laughs> that, that sounds like, let me see your, your bad guy face. Mm. Get on my office. <laughs> or maybe stay if you want. <laughs> Maybe I can be the bad guy <laughs> for you. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. But yeah, Kelly Kelly, she had that bubbly smile. I don't think people would have took her serious as a bad guy. So I understand that. <laughs> Number seven, Bruno Sammartino. Oh, did not Bruno Sammartino holds the record for being the longest reigning WWE champion of all time. And in those 2,800 days that he was Ooh. champion, a heel turn was never considered. Bruno was very much WWE's golden boy and turning him heel was virtually out of the question. 
During the 60s, pro wrestling was vastly different to how it was today, mm -hmm. and talents weren't overexposed on television. And this meant that talents didn't need to flip between babyface and heel as often as they do now. Yeah. Although Bruno never turned heel in WWE, it certainly would have been interesting for WWE to explore how this character and gimmick would have altered the WWE's heroic champion turning on the fans. Number 6. Evan Bourne a former tag team champion true? Evan Bourne Evan, was a Evan WWE superstar well. between 2008 and 2014, and during all that time, Bourne remained a babyface. Mm -hmm. While his offense was certainly more inclined to a babyface wrestler, yep. and his entire gimmick and presentation was suited to a heroic character, there was always that what if when it comes to Bourne. How would he have done in a heel role? Well, it's hard to say, and hard to give a fair answer without discussing what Bourne's character would have been. If WWE were ever going to turn him heel, the most appropriate time was when he was in the midst of a tag team run alongside Kofi Kingston. Mm -hmm. This tag team was extremely popular, and WWE had broken them up by having Bourne turn on Kingston, but WWE just didn't want to position Bourne in a different role. Number 5. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat in terms of the best babyface characters of all time, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is certainly a strong contender at the top of that particular discussion. Throughout his time in WWE, Steamboat was never once a heel, mainly because the connection he had with the audience was always positive, and they never grew tired of his character or matches. And that's that's where turning heel and face, that's where it, it matters, the crowd interaction. When you start to get stale as a babyface, it's time for you to turn heel. Most most times, most times, it's time for you to turn heel. If you're not getting that reaction that you should be getting, it's time for you to turn heel. Prime example, Daniel Bryan. When Daniel Bryan came back from um from his retirement in WWE, the fan reaction was there. It was it was it was positive, but it wasn't as overwhelming as it once was. So he went heel and it worked. It was great. That's how you got it. you kind of have to read the crowd, read the 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 arenas that you go to. If you're not getting that usual babyface reaction, it's time for you to probably turn a heel. Although WWE never pulled a trigger on a heel turn, <laughs> this doesn't mean that Steamboat himself didn't pitch a character shift. In an interview with the Post and Courier, the WWE Hall of Famer said he had requested to turn heel back in the early 90s, but this was shot down. The former IC champion stated, "Pat Patterson simply told me that it would probably ruin my career." I just wanted to experience what it felt like on the other side of the fence. Mm. As we all know, the heels have the most fun out there in the ring. They do. When you're a face for a long time and you turn heel, your stock value immediately goes up, especially if you're able to pull it off in the ring mm -hmm. and on the mic. Number 4. The Ultimate Warrior It's hard to picture the Ultimate Warrior as a heel and that's likely why WWE yeah. never decided to make that creative move. For most of his WWE career, Warrior was one of the most popular stars on the entire mm -hmm. roster and even when he was feuding with the legendary Hulk Hogan, his popularity never dipped and if anything, it increased. During this time period, Hogan claimed that he actually pitched that he should turn heel and this would have made Warrior the default number one babyface in the yeah. entire company. Warrior was also a strong merchandise mover as his colorful persona opened the door for several merchandise opportunities. Yeah, him going heel probably wouldn't have worked. And this is one of the crazy things why Hulk Hogan was afraid to go heel because of Hulkamania and how big it had gotten. And he was afraid it wasn't going to work. When he went heel, it worked perfectly. And I think Ultimate Warrior, I don't know if it... I don't think it probably would have worked just how he is, his persona in the ring, his gear, like the action figures. I don't know. I mean, once again, Hulk did it. So maybe, maybe the Ultimate Warrior could have pulled it off, but it just depends on how it, how it would have been booked. Which WWE didn't resist capitalizing on. Number three, Rob Van Dam. Mm, you're when right. Rob Van Dam Rob signed Van Dam with the WWE in 2001 as part of the invasion so, storyline, no. he was initially a heel. However, RVD's popularity quickly took off, and it wasn't before long that RVD was one of the top babyfaces in the WWE. This babyface run would never end, and WWE because would never opt to turn him heel. In 2006, RVD was involved in the ECW vs WWE storyline, and even though he feuded with WWE's top babyface John Cena, he was still presented as a babyface. Baby yep. RVD was insanely popular as a face, and WWE never had a meaningful reason to make the change. Yeah. Everything that WWE did with RVD, whether it was a mid-card feud with Christian, a world title feud with Triple H, or an old bold tag team with Kane, was met with unanimous support towards mm -hmm. a former WWE champion. 
It wouldn't have made logical sense for RVD to have a shift in character motivations, and if WWE did turn him heel, the fans would have struggled to take him seriously in that role. It, it wouldn't have worked. One, because he had this stoner vibe like, what's good, man? <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass, man. Like, he, he had that stoner vibe. So, it would have been very hard to take him seriously as a bad guy. And plus, his moveset, it just screams of baby face. Number two, Goldberg. Mm. One of the worst booking decisions in WCW history was the decision to turn Goldberg heel. This was a decision which had drastic consequences for WCW's future. And some even cite this as one of the signs that WCW had clearly lost their way. When Goldberg debuted in WWE in 2003, they were insistent on keeping him as a babyface, yeah. and this was maintained for his entire 12 month run. Goldberg has been on a part time schedule making sporadic appearances since 2016. He, he only works as and a Although fans face. have sometimes booed him, he's yeah. never turned heel. Was this the WWE learning from WCW's mistakes? Or did WWE simply think nobody would be interested in seeing Goldberg as a heel? Nah. The fan response to Goldberg over the past few years has been less than positive. Yeah. His continuous push in the main event scene and his victories over fan favorites such as Kevin Owens and The Fiend have led to a disconnect between him and the modern day audience. If the WWE's wishes to explore Goldberg as a heel, there is more chance of it succeeding right now than ever before. Possibly, but I, I honestly don't think we need to have him out there like that anyway. In my humble opinion, uh, he's done all he could do, in my opinion, unless he's going to get somebody else over. That's the only thing I, I could ever possibly want Goldberg to do when it comes to WWE. Getting someone else over, a newer talent, that would be cool. But outside of that, nah, him turning heel doesn't really excite me. Him staying a babyface is, is, doesn't really, you know, move the needle for me, in my opinion. And number one, Rey Mysterio. Yep, for go. the past 20 years, Rey Mysterio has been showcased in WWE as a heroic babyface who's yep. always on the right and side his of morality. Uh, his Mysterio as a babyface just makes perfect sense, as his image is kid Rings friendly, and face. Mysterio has maintained his position as a top merchandise seller for several years. Believe it or not, WWE did consider a heel turn for Mysterio. This was back in 2012 when Mysterio was in a tag team with Sin Cara. WWE considered turning Mysterio heel and having him feud with the Luchador. WWE hoped that this would elevate Cara to the next level, but ultimately they decided against it. There's never been any need to turn Mysterio heel and it wouldn't have made financial sense to execute a turn to the dark side for one of the most popular superstars of all time. I forgot all about the Dominic and, well, I think it was Ray versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, I think Dominic, yeah, Dominic did get involved in that match. That was actually a fun match. I was not expecting it to be as fun as it was, but that was a really fun match, bro. Brock versus Ray, that was fun. That was that was definitely fun, bro. But yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Ray is he's one of those guys. I don't think it, it would ever have worked for him to go heel because the cost like the costumes he'd be wearing, like his wrestling gear, the way they're so colorful and stuff, it just wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. Ray will always and forever be a beloved baby face. So but comment down below. Let me know, man. Who is your favorite heel character ever in wrestling? Who is your favorite heel character, man? Let me know down below my favorite heel character ever in wrestling um i'm gonna be honest with you bro there's been some good heels there's been triple h is one of them he, he like i'm talking about somebody that when you look back on it you literally despise them um triple h was a a, a very good heel very despicable heel um vince mcmahon very despicable heel um of of the new generation it has to be mjf i'm i'm dead ass just the stuff i've seen from mjf alone now he's arguably one of the best heels this business has seen he is good he knows how to make you hate him you'll love him and hate him at the same time so comment down below let me know what's who's your favorite heel of all time appreciate all the love and support Road to 90k. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.